What's up guys, Shuri here, and today I want to talk to you about the different ways you can play Hunter, and is he a damage dealer, a healer, both, or does he do other things too? Well, for this one, he is going to be a lot of pretty much everything. Basically, what we want to do here is bottleneck them in this hallway, knowing that our team's going to spawn closer than theirs, and as long as we can keep our teammates healed up to where we always have two to three alive, and we give our teammates the best chance to know where they are by throwing our sonar balls into people, it should be able to give us enough of an advantage to where we can actually slow them down pretty significantly, which is kind of crazy considering the fact that the people we're playing against just breeze through the entire map until this point. But luckily, our team's playing together. We're all right here. We have heals and we have really good range damage from the hunter and good burst healing when it's needed. And that's what's so cool about the new ability from the hunter is that you don't have to use that ability just right away. You can wait until your team really needs it, especially if your teammates have shields like ours do, and then you have a healer, you can wait just a little bit longer to use yours. That way, if someone comes up from behind or they're trying to take out your healers that can't always heal right away, you can just go over them, throw your heal down and be completely fine. Or you can save the hunter heal for when they have cooldowns. That way you're getting a lot of their burst damage out while your other healers are just taking care of the normal damage. And that stuff can keep your healers from getting overwhelmed. And the extra amount of damage he adds from range that can take out things like Gatlin and Osis from afar, and also the knockback ability, he can keep things like the Jabali away from you. And most importantly, if there's a Johnny Jet, he can get him out with the Sonar Balls. There's just so many things that the Hunter adds value to right here. And then on top of that, you have Burst healing that just does so much, especially when your team's all grouped together, you are healing for absurd amounts. And it just really is a nice option. Once it gets to about where it is now, you might want to switch to a hunter if you don't have one. As long as you have another healer and at least one tank, it's probably a good idea to go hunter because you can give your team those extra heals, but you can also have that range damage. Right here, I am just trying to stay alive. My teammates are kind of screwed and it's just me so I know that I have to be very careful and just try to delay them to make sure that my teammates can get back and that's exactly what we did right off the bat we came in we threw down our heel right on top of the cart and then we just try to stay alive we didn't have a lot of people alive and they have so many defensive things going for them right now that it just wasn't a good idea to push in and all I really wanted to go down there for was to give the heal and give my team time to get there. But right here, we do go around to the side because we had to take the Sindri out. If we don't kill the Sindri, he will just heal through everything. And then after we get the guy on the right, we are able to go help our teammates on the left with the guys that they weren't able to kill until just now. And all the teamwork in the world can be done by the Hunter because of that long-range damage, the huge amounts of heals, and even the knockbacks are such a huge thing, especially at the end right here, we're trying to keep them from touching the point. I obviously suck, so I did die there, but that's not the hunter's fault, that's because I suck. But the good news is that we are able to get right back in the fray, and we are gonna try to get a little bit of line of sight with that left wall to help kill the fade, and then we're just gonna keep as much distance from the other guys as possible, and the amount of damage Hunter does is so crazy, but look at this. 200k damage to hero, not shields, taking 85k and healing for 41,000. I switched to it in the second half of that map. That is just absolutely crazy numbers. But this video is not just about how to do the end game. It's to show you all the different stages that Hunter can be good at and one special circumstance at the end that will just absolutely blow your mind. But I do want to ask you guys, please like and subscribe. It helps YouTube know people like the content, so it'll give it to newer people and it'll help get this out to more people, making it more likely for me to want to make more of these tutorials for every day. So yeah, 
Basically, what we're doing here is we're trying to get as much damage on range as possible. That way we don't take very much damage. We are using our sonar balls to let our teammates know exactly where they are. That way it's a lot easier for your teammates to strategize and come in without having any communication. And right there, that's exactly what we do. We had people come in from the bottom of Red Barn, and then we also had people coming in from the back, and I told all of our teammates exactly where the people were so they could all converge on them at once, which is exactly what happened. And so that is one great part is just letting your teammates know where these people are. But the amount of the absurd damage you were able to do right here is so crazy. And I actually forgot to record this, which really sucks because you can't see that I'm just basically spamming the heal every time it's up. But that allows us to get the good heals. Our teammate is doing an amazing job on the Sindri to make sure that the turret is in a good spot to heal us in the room. And that way people can't take it out. And it's just a really good situation overall. And right here, we are able to do a really good job of just making sure that our teammates know where they are keeping wall peaks and really good angles so we're not taking damage but we're able to provide tons of it and then i get absolutely wrecked by beef on his fencing that's super rough luckily for me i'm able to get back very quickly and we have kombucha farms the number one jabali to ever exist in this game for real and also he is not just the number one jabali but also a content creator who's very funny and you guys might like his videos his link will be in the description but either way we do get the triple here and we are just trying to set up and figure out where they're coming from next since my whole team's really just looking down the middle i do want to focus on making sure no one comes on that right side but then once i realize they have a sniper just trying to hit our guys from up top i do want to make sure that i give him the proper amount of attention to keep him from coming out and hitting the snipes but then the Gatling came in the back. Luckily, we were able to get back there before our teammate died. And really, it's just showing you exactly how hard it is to kill a hunter, especially if you have like a Ruby shield or a Jabali shield and some good heals. Because basically, to end up killing someone if the hunter's paying attention is so impossibly hard. Because even if you catch the hunter out in a really good spot for you, he can just hit the full heal and then have time for his healer to go heal him back to full or be able to get over by the healer. And it's kind of going to be hard to get used to if you just don't think about it. But the more you get used to hitting that heal when you or your teammates need it, the easier it will get over time. And as you can see there, we went 21 and 1, but the most important thing is we only took 30k damage. It wasn't even the healing that got us through that. It was all about Kombucha Farms having the best shields in the game. But right here, we are on a whole different thing happening. We are in a lot of trouble because there's a Gatlin with a shield in front of us and right next to him is a Fade. This is maybe the worst thing ever, but I do see an opening to just run past the Fade, go ahead and kill the Gatlin, hit our sonar ball so we get the speed boost and just run back to where our teammates are. Luckily, our Ruby had already thrown the shield for us and we were in a really good spot. I do want to make sure that no one's coming through our heal cave and I push up to go help them take out the fade and immediately get called on my left that there's a sniper. So I go take him out and I totally thought that was going to work out for me and I was wrong. Oh my God. I know you guys are shocked too. If you stand out in the middle with no cover versus a Gatlin, you're going to lose. I mean, hey, you know, we all learn something sometimes. Anyways, we are going to try to go ahead and flank over to the left since our whole team's on the right. We are able to come from behind and it splits the attention of that fade from our teammates to us, allowing us to go ahead and get that free kill. And not only do we get the free kill, but we get the Gatlin low enough to be able to jump shot him. We hit our heal and we're probably going to die the diggy, which we know. But we get it to the middle point and we pop our heal for the next guy coming up. And we also got the diggy to one shot, so it was an easy midpoint uh, cap at that point. Our teammates do a great job when they spawn to come in there and get it. And right there, I was trying to challenge this Gatlin because I was still mad from earlier when I challenged him out in the open and lost. So I was like, well, I'm going to do it now and it'll work, I promise. And thank God I lived as long as I did, which made me realize how stupid it was. And I go back up 
to go make sure we get the Walling when he went invisible, and we're just playing our corners. We're making sure we give our team the support. It's not even about healing right now. We don't really need to heal very much. Our team just doesn't need that. What we do need is for me to not lag. So basically, for us, we backed up, but in the game, I went sideways because I lagged out of the game, and so it just kind of sent me across the thing, which really sucked. But luckily, I did have a Gatlin come over, pop his ult, try to save me, and everything did work out, but we still did lag a little bit at the end of this game. The biggest thing is, we weren't really trying to go for the big heals like we were in the other games. All we really needed to do was finish off kills. These long range kills on things like their Gatlin and their Sniper and making sure we pick their healers off whenever we see them. That's another thing that this character is so good at and something that's really undervalued. The fact that he can kill the healers so fast and unlike a Gatlin, it has the mobility and you can also do a lot more to help your team other than just do the damage. And heck, if you pair this with a Gatlin that's doing tons of shield bursting damage, you can both pair down a healer before they can even do anything about it. And then if people go for your Gatlin, you're there to make sure that you give the burst heals. My teammate was doing a great job on the guy in the room. I told my teammate to back up from that left side and I push up in their place. We get him really low and I push back to go heal my Gatlin. But since he died to the shell, I'm just going to use it on myself. And I do knock back the shell. That way he has less distance on me and it'll give me the ability to heal up more and be able to survive the encounter, and then I go to help my teammates with the Zero Kelvin. But just simply being able to burst down to healers as fast as we are on these games is really what I wanted to show you, because it's something that people don't talk about with Hunter very often, is the fact that he puts out so much damage just because the Gatlin is the new hot thing to do that doesn't mean it's the best in all situations. Especially because one of the things that can take out Gatlin so easily is a hunter. The fact that you can have so much mobility and just jump up and peak shot the Gatlin over and over, you can always have it under your radar ball, you can knock it back and then shoot it. You can do so many different things, hunter versus Gatlin, that the Gatlin cannot do anything against. And the simple fact that not everyone's an Osis that can snipe headshots every time, or a Gatlin that has the game sense and awareness of when to get out of the different modes, and it's just a lot easier to play hunter. And it's so much more forgiving when you have that heal and you have the knockback to get people away from you. You can make so many more mistakes on the hunter. And not only can you be forgiven for those mistakes, also a lot of the problems that average players are going to have is being able to burst down that healer while he's healing his team or being able to take out that Gatlin that's just doing so much burst damage. Right here, we're able to jump up and down, making it where the Gatlin doesn't hit us as much, even though he's in his ult. So we're having a lot of trouble here. It is really nice not to have to stand still like a Gatlin would against this Gatlin. It makes it to where we have so much better of a chance to be able to kill them and we can weave in and out right here. And we left a heal. We're going to hopefully be able to tell our teammates where people are, especially because one of our teammates is the number one Jabali player in the world. Kombucha is just an absolute animal. Again, he will have his channel linked in the description if you would like to go see what he's up to. He is the best Jabali there is, and I'm probably going to be doing some more videos with him. Uh, he's a really nice guy. And luckily for us, we are able to get back here. Our team is fully set up, and the other team just has very little chance here, especially with the burst healing we have. We have amazing shields. We have multiple healers. Like It's just so hard to take this down. And the simple fact is, we don't necessarily need more than just the range damage of the Hunter. Ruby is an insane damage amount once you get close, and Hunter can kind of solo things from pretty far away. With all of these shields and all of this heals, I mean, it's a really hard comp to beat, I'm not gonna lie. And while we went in solo and then got Kombucha and just absolutely destroyed, it doesn't take that much coordination. If your shields do a good job on shields, you have a nice healer that knows what they're doing, and then you're doing all the range damage possible and making sure that you're giving that burst healing when it's necessary, you're gonna win the game.
and Kombucha did such a good job with the shields and so did the Ruby, I didn't even need the 18 healers that were there because the simple fact, I took 22k damage. All those shields are crazy. But this segment might even be the most important one. We played against a pro team, which you'll see part of that game after this one, and they made me realize, oh, these people don't even know that you're supposed to switch Hunter if you're getting screwed by a Johnny Jet. Well, you're going to see exactly why I saw that we had a Johnny Jet on the other team. So I immediately go Hunter, and I don't really care about doing any heals. I don't even think I popped the heals once, and I also don't really care that much about doing any damage. The only thing I care about is making sure the Johnny Jet gets hit by radar bombs. And then I try to basically just kill the healers when I can. But that's secondary to making sure that we aren't being stalled the entire time by the Johnny Jet. Because the thing is, they will either have to switch off Johnny Jet or just not be able to do that much. No matter how good you are as Johnny Jet, if you have a hunter that literally isn't even trying to hurt the other people on your team, you're going to be really screwed. But the thing is, you'll see even pro teams, if they leave that Johnny Jet up, he will be able to absolutely ruin your life. And so if you have a Johnny Jet on the cart, you can't figure out how to get him off, then you're just screwed on offense. You literally will not be able to push the cart unless you have somebody that's able to take him out. And so you can either try to get, I don't know, like 23 or 24 kills on a Gatlin. Uh, yeah, that happened. Or you can go to the hunter. Switch your roles, man. If you're doing something that's not working, don't just keep doing it until you lose. Just go ahead and switch hunter if you're playing against the Johnny Jet. Or if you are on the defense where these guys are right now, go ahead, switch hunter. Get those extra heals. Get the long range damage. You're going to be in a much better position because of your mobility than even if you played Gatlin. Or keep the Gatlin. That's fine too. Just make sure that one of you is playing the Hunter. Because you need those extra heals. You need that extra damage from range. And right there, we go 7-1. and one. We don't do anything too fancy. But we stop the Johnny Jet. And the reason that I knew Bob was an annoying Johnny Jet. Is because he had been sitting here doing this since 3 minutes left. It was absolutely crazy. But luckily for us, Bob can live against all four of those people. And then the Gatlin was busy sitting in that window trying to get my teammates when they came out. I just tried to get everyone to not go out in the open and like feed the kills to the Gatlin. And the thing is, I'm kind of glad they kept feeding kills to the Gatlin for free. Because if he wasn't getting a free KD boost, he might have actually gone down and switched to Hunter. And then got our Johnny Jet. But instead, Bob kept living 1v4 over and over until I could get back out there and kind of disrupt things a little bit. And then my teammates finally got out of spawn. They only have one more time to go. And the thing is, they still don't have a hunter. And we still have Bob. We can't lose. So whenever I saw Bob, the first thing I did was I switched hunter because, you know what? I've seen this man run around on Jazuki and three other people that have tournament banners. And he couldn't die. So you best believe whenever I see a Johnny Jet on the other team and I'm playing offense, I'm going straight Hunter. Because you have to get him out. What's the point of getting a billion kills and doing a ton of damage if you make your team lose while doing it? So just go ahead and switch Hunter if you need to get the Johnny out. Or if you need to be able to do a lot of long range damage or quickly burst down a healer. Or if your team just needs that little extra bit of healing. Or if you're at the end of the defense and you need the extra run back speed from your sonar balls. And the extra healing and the extra range damage. And the Gatlin kill ability. Uh, you gotta think about it guys. Maybe you should be switching Hunter. Alright guys, please like, subscribe, and let me know if this was helpful to you. I really appreciate you watching and hope you all have a great day.